Hello. Hello. At the beginning here, at, uh, let's see, it's April 21st, 1999. Richard David Davis. My father, I'm Bob Davis, born in 1950. The interlocutor. The interlocutor. So, Dad, um, I guess we wanted to start uh, uh, with going through your family tree, find out uh, what you can tell us about all of your antecedents. Uh, work into any stories you remember about them, any uh, okay. descriptions? Can we or start with the, the grandfathers and grandmothers? Sure, yeah. start with like your mom and dad. or mom and dad. Or, or go back as far as you Yeah, let's, let's start way, way back and see how far back you can go. Well, I know I can go to the grandfathers, my grandfathers. Uh -huh. And uh, the, the one that is, I was named after, Richard David Davis, was a kind of a joyful fellow. Was was, uh, I can't remember where he started out. That's the only thing. Can't remember where he was born. No. Well, which, who was born? Somebody was born in Germany. Well, that in, was, is that the Bears? That's the Bears, but that wasn't Germany. It was born Hungary. Yeah. So, Maybe I shouldn't try and tell them. I got to know where they're born if we're going to talk about yeah, them. Yeah, no, whatever you remember or think you remember or might have heard or anything. That's fine. Well, then I can show you the, the pictures of Leela Stevenson when he met her up in Sacramento. But they, they had long since been somewhere else, so he, he wasn't born in Sacramento. He wasn't born. In, he this was is R.D. the first? R.D. the first, right. Well, now we have a picture of him, right, the, right, the, the uh, on the there. baseball team. When he oh, was, yeah, that's where right. he said he was in. It's yeah. when he's in uh, Nebraska. Nebraska, there he was. Where did we get that picture? I don't know. Mom dug it up. Okay. Well. So that's already the, so he spent some time in Nebraska. But where where did he where did you first well, pick up I his trail? Him was, <laughs> he, w he was in Pasadena. He left San Francisco f after the San Francisco earthquake. He had what? a department store there. Which was, was it? Davis was Mercantile or something? I forget. We got a long history of it here. We, I mean, we got we have the the thing yeah, that has propaganda the propaganda that tells all about it. All right. I don't know where it is right this minute, but it's around someplace. Anyway, he sold out a couple of days after the earthquake in the street, all the stuff that he had, and then just decided to come to, to Pasadena, uh -huh. which he did, and uh, sort of went into the uh, not exactly the real estate business, but he did buy some property. Uh -huh. And he built the uh, the uh, an apartment house on uh, Los Robles, corner of Los Robles, and uh, just below Green Street. I forget the name of that street in there, uh -huh. where the Hilton Hotel is now. And uh, then next to the apartment, he built a bunch of uh, little bungalows, the Davis bungalows. There must have been fifteen or twenty of them in there. Hmm. And, uh, you build them to rent out? Yeah, I build them to rent. And uh, they looked just like houses, little houses. And it was kind of nice. They were, they were, it was like having your own house when, hmm. you, when you had one. So the trick was to get one, though. We, we tried to get one, Dorothy and I did, after the war. And that, uh, Uncle Lee was the, was was the fellow it? that was running them. And uh, he said he had a, a waiting list some distance. These people had been waiting a long time. and. Uh, so he could, there wasn't any opening. Really wasn't that, <laughs> that was too bad. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, uh, it, was, it was nice. And uh, well, he, what do you remember about our uh, my grandfather? Yeah, not a lot. He uh, we used to go down there on uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving for dinner. Dad, uh, he had a house down. He, he had a house on California Street, just about half a block from Caltech on the huh. south side of California Street. Huh. House still there. And uh, we, uh, I guess, Dodie and Eddie and uh, Uncle Lee and Aunt Alice and their kids all went there for... Now Uncle Lee is our Uncle Lee's... Uncle dad's brother. Is, is, is uh, your dad's brother. brother. So R.D. Right. the first son. son. Absolutely. So how many sons did he have? He had two. And Lee and Lee and RD. Rick, and then uh, he had a daughter, Dodie, but he had her by the by his next wife because his first wife died in childbirth with Lee. That's how she got out of it. What picture. was her name? Leela Bell. Leela Bell. And what was her maiden name? Leela. 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 Leela Stevenson. Stevenson. 
was 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 uh, your dad's mother and Lee's mother. But what was Dodie's mother's name? Dodie's mother's name was uh, Adelaide. Adelaide. Yeah, I can't remember what her name was prior to that, though. Her maiden name. Yeah. But now, did so she and uh, Richard the first then stayed married for the. Till they both died. Yeah. Uh huh. They lived in. Well, they lived in that house in Pasadena on California Street. The mo that I can remember, that's where they lived. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, Dodi Nay and Eddie Nay were married in that same house in the backyard. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I can remember going to the wedding and being the uh, the greeter, I guess, or something. Or an usher of some sort. I was sort of in a, like a, I had a uniform that I stood on. A uniform? A hat. Greeted people as they came to the door and told them where to go and how to do it. And now, were there ushers in, in, in addition to that, or was it just... Oh, yeah. There were, the wedding itself took place in the backyard, and so I was at the front door and just kind of shoveling people through, I guess, and talking. I don't know what I was supposed to do. Was you a uniform? Oh, yes. I had a, <laughs> a bellhop uniform. <laughs> Started my uniforming early. That gets you to the military. Uh, kind of yeah. <laughs> so... Then let's see what else we did. That what kind of a guy was he? What, uh, uh, your grandfather? He's kind of a nice guy, easy going, uh -huh. and uh, but very sort of. Uh, I think he was pretty family oriented, although he was. I forget how old I was when he died. I couldn't have been too old. I should get the dates straight if I'm going to uh -huh. tell these funny stories, but. Uh, well, he we didn't we weren't very close, uh, you know, as, as as an individual and as a grandfather. Uh -huh. I don't remember much grandfather business with him except uh -huh. these family gatherings that we had. You know, what sort of and gatherings did you have? Just Christmas and uh, Thanksgiving dinners. Those would be all at his house. Yeah, they were. So and so, who would be at those? Well, uh, Dad and Mother. And Uncle Lee and Aunt Alice, his wife, and their kids, and uh, Dodie was there, I guess. And and I don't know. And after she married Eddie, Eddie was there, and then mm -hmm. they started. Their kids started. Then when they died, then Dodie and Eddie had the had the that excuse me that end of the family's uh -huh. Christmas and uh, and Thanksgiving and stuff. Uh -huh. Well, now he was like uh, involved in the Tournament of Roses, right? Yeah, he had been in 1913, I think it was. He was the president, president of the Tournament of Roses. Yeah. And who was his, who was his Grand Marshal? That's a good one. Look at that picture, because there's that picture of him with Taft, which I always thought was uh, when Taft came to do was like the Grand Marshal of the President. No, that's no. wrong. That's he, he just happened to be here on some other piece of business. Yeah. And uh, I guess he must have come the same year that. Uh, <coughs> My grandfather was head of the tournament, and that's probably why he was with him. Although he Cause that was that was his big civic good position. Yeah, hmm. I think I don't know. They could have been good friends, or uh -huh. could have had some other connection to him. But I always assumed it was because of the tournament. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. And how about uh, well, your your grandmother? <coughs> she must have. You make you. I can't remember her because she died when Lee was. Oh, I don't never met her. Never met her. No. The only reason I found out about her <coughs> was lately uh, some cousin of mine that lives up there in Sacramento and is part of that Stevenson family. They're from Sa Sacramento. From Sacramento, yeah, originally, and uh, he knew he knew where she was and what all happened, and he told me about this. They put that window, see that window? In? We have a picture of it back there by the TV. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they did that in her honor here a couple of years ago, and. Uh, I used the money that what's his name, my grandfather, had set aside for that purpose, ah. way back. And it's uh, what? Where is that? That's in some place Sacramento, in, Sa in some at the church, Presbyterian Church in uh, in Sacramento. Okay, well, I think it tells you that on the back of that thing. Yeah, I'll get, get a picture of that. Yeah, put it on here too. So uh, hmm. that's about as much as we know about uh, that fellow. Little Lord, you know, how far back does this uh, thing go? That's, we far, have, that's as far as, 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 far as we got. There's RD. And the old RD. And and there's, here's his wife, Leela. Leela has and, a. And I, I didn't know that her dad's name was Andrew. Yeah. Maybe it is. Andrew Stevenson yeah. is her dad. 
Yeah. We don't know anything about him. Well, we got a picture of a guy that I thought was her grandfather. I thought it was her father, actually, Leo's father. Uh huh. But uh, uh, that maybe, but it was a different name at the time. Hmm. Is that back, your writing or is that mine? It's on the back of the picture. That's mom's writing. Yeah. It's on the back of the picture though, upstairs. When we take a look at that, you can see what it says about him. Right. Yeah. So, this cousin of mine is very good at uh, things like that. Yeah, that's sending you propaganda. Yeah. Okay, so that takes care of him, does it? I guess. And, uh, anything else you might I can think about adding about the old? Uh -huh. he, I guess he, he did pretty well in the real estate business, I know, because he, he got those things going, they, they, they made money. And uh, when, when he died, he left the property, those properties, they called it the Davis properties, and to the uh, kids' dad, Uncle Lee, uh, Doty. Uh -huh. And uh, and Nana, that's what we call his last wife, second wife. What was your real name? Her real name was Adelaide. Adelaide. Nana. Nana. So that was, that was a fairly good deal. It was, you know, there was lots of, it generated quite a bit of income, but it was getting, after a while, it, the stuff got down and all these relatives were more interested in getting money than they were in fixing up the apartments. And, and the bungalows. In the bungalows and, and uh, making that thing work, so they sold the Davis properties after the war. Sometime I forget what, about when it was, but it was. We can find out easy enough uh -huh. if that's important. However, when they did, they sold it to a guy that uh, didn't want to do much either than than kind of milk it. I forget his name. He was a funny guy, but he had it and. Uh, he turned around and, uh, and uh, sold it to, I don't know who he sold it to, uh -huh. somebody anyway. The so then they, they just divvied the up the dough. They divvied up the dough and uh, each family had so much. And, uh, then the, 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 the uh, apartment house and the, the, the uh, cottages were made into the Hilton Hotel and hmm. surrounding environs there. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty good place. Mm -hmm. Nice neighborhood. Yeah, nice neighborhood. Still is. Okay, so that's about old that. R.D. Yeah, how about now R.D. the second old my grandfather, yeah, your dad. Yeah, old dad. Well, dad was... Uh, he, was uh, he was born in Pasadena, right? Born in Pasadena, right. And uh, I guess the first... Of course, I didn't know much about him until I was born. But I would imagine lived, not. He lived early on <laughs> in Pasadena. He went to uh, school in Canada. And, uh, and where, now we're in Canada? He, he has, St. Uh, Andrews. St. Andrews, which is where? Uh, near where Toronto. Near Toronto? Believe, yeah. He got sent up there for boarding school yeah, when right. he was a he kid. Did. He did. And he was, a, uh, he was a cricket player and a hockey player and a, I guess a football player there, although I don't know. I don't remember much about that. Although he's, we've got a whole bunch of books, albums, uh -huh. picture albums over there. A lot of the pictures were taken up there in Canada. Mm -hmm. This place where he was. Uncle Lee went up there too with him. Oh, so they were in school together? school together? How much younger was Uncle Lee than him? I don't know. It must have been two or three years. Uh -huh. like that. Not much more than that. So. And what, ye what year about was he born, do you know? Well, let's see. 1898, I believe. Uh -huh. So that's about when my mother was born too. They were both born right together. So he was only like 22 when you were born? Yeah, that's about right. I guess I didn't yeah. realize that, but that's yeah. about right. Where, where, okay. I got born right after the war, the, the World uh -huh. War, First World War. He was in the Navy. He, 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 were one of the, he was one of the 90 Day Wonders that they sent to uh, Annapolis for a special training. And, uh, so how, how does that work? What do you mean 90 day wonder? Well, that's what they call it. Actually, I think he was there six months. They were trying to whoop up uh, a lot of civilians and into being good reserve type officers for, uh -huh. for the Navy and other places, I guess, as well. And then, of course, being brilliant, <laughs> went into the Navy to get his training. And uh, so when he came out of there, he was he was assigned to the uh, USS Arizona, which was a battleship, huh. and uh, served on that for the balance of the war, as I recall. And what was his rank? 
He was a, a so lieutenant. Yeah. Or maybe an ensign, I don't know. Uh -huh. uh, maybe a lieutenant at the end. Uh -huh. Probably was. And, uh, so where, did you know where the Arizona was stationed? Or? I don't. Some ocean. It was in the ocean. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> I don't know what they did with it. You uh -huh. don't hear much about the Navy in World War I. That was, yeah. Uh, I, they, don't, uh, they didn't have much to do, it sounded like. But, uh, they kept busy. I guess the, the Germans had some ships then too, and so oh, yeah. they must have had some battles somewhere. Yeah. But uh, if they did, I never heard about it. Or if I did, I forget. Uh huh. So, my dad never talked much about it. So that's about how it came out there. But anyway, he came home, and uh, I guess I don't think he was married when he went off to war overseas. But I can't be honestly sure about uh -huh. it. He and mother may have been married when they went overseas, because that's what I was. But I don't, he, I don't know whether he did or not. But maybe not. Although, no, I don't know. We can check it up and see. Probably. It's too bad mother isn't around. There was a good gal old mom. Boy, she mm -hmm. was. Home. But <coughs> anyway, uh, when I can remember not being born, but the first thing I can mm -hmm. remember is. Uh, we were living with uh, mother's father and mother in their house down on Linda Vista Drive in Pasadena, which was a neat little house still there. It looks just like it always did. It's right on the edge of the Arroyo, just down from the Rose Bowl a little bit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, right on Linda Vista? Yeah, right on Linda Vista, the south side. Mm -hmm. I mean the, the east side mm -hmm. of Linda Vista. So uh, <coughs> that was a pretty good deal because I, I think uh, we didn't, mother and dad didn't have any place to stay much of any, and they didn't have much money, I guess, and so that was probably why they went to live with them. She lived with, uh, with, with, the, with the bears. Uh. That was John Bear and uh, Laura Bear. Then that was Mimo and Ampy, we call them. Were, were John and. When I say again, say a lot again. <laughs> <laughs> Who we're talking about now? We're talking about uh, my mother's parents, uh -huh. Laura Barden Bear and George John Willis Bear. Those two guys, uh -huh. my grandfather and grandmother. Oh, well, maybe we should talk about uh, about them. What do we know about them? Well, John was a guy that started out working for the. Uh, What's the name of those brothers? That the Mayo Brothers. The Mayo Brothers, yeah. Right. He, uh -huh. was, he was a kind of a business manager mm -hmm. for them. I'm not sure how he got hooked up with them, but he lived in the same village they did, and I guess they were friends, and so he went to work for them. But uh, he couldn't have stayed with them too long because, how do you know? I should have probably been doing some of the same kind of thing you're doing here to find out what everybody <laughs> did. Uh -huh. But uh, I didn't. And, uh, well, they didn't have these video cameras right there. Uh, is that what the trouble was? <laughs> yeah. 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 Lord didn't want We'd to have to have been writing all this at the time. Yeah. You know, I don't have to Probably write it. I never got around to it, did we? Just chat, let somebody else transcribe it. Mean, if we didn't have these, these digitals, we never would be doing this either. Uh, uh, but anyhow, uh, he, he, he started there, and, and God, there's, there's a. I've got some stuff in my drawer over there that. Uh, tells about John Willis Bear and all the things he did because uh -huh. he was also the president of Oxdale College when he got out here and uh, then he was president of the bank in Pasadena. He was a real neat guy and he I can remember him he, every year he'd have a birthday party down at the Huntington at, uh, he'd get the ballroom and have a sort of a, a men's party and invite all the guys that amount to anything in town huh. and have this birthday party. I don't know what it was for. Maybe it was part of it for because he was the head of the bank, or I don't know. Uh -huh. But he just kind of kept doing it every year. And the, I didn't go to it, but I used to sneak in there in the afternoon and check up on the, how they were doing because they had these big uh, hunks of ice that were molded into some kind of a figures, oh, mostly sculpture. animals, yeah, sculptures. Uh -huh. And that was part of the decorations of the place. And, uh, so. How old were you when you sneak into these places? I really couldn't have been too old. I must have been eight or ten, maybe. Huh. Like then. 
I think my brother Donald was probably with me too. He's a, uh -huh. he's a big sneaker too. <laughs> <laughs> and so and that, I guess he was living at the at the Huntington at that time. Oh, so he. And so he, yeah, he, he they sold that house down at Linda Vista. Vista. Linda Vista. And I don't think they moved. Well, they may have moved directly to a cottage. I guess they did. They bought a cottage right on the grounds of the Huntington Hotel. It was just that's still there. That cottage. Uh -huh. They lived in, and that's he died there actually. One Sunday morning, getting ready to go to church, he was active in the Presbyterian Church, the Pasadena Presbyterian Church. He and Dr. Freeman, who was a minister there, uh -huh. for a long time, uh, were good buddies, and uh, so the families got acquainted pretty well too. I, I knew the Freeman, Freeman kids, and uh, in fact, David Freeman, who was, who was the big uh, badminton player, and the uh -huh. little, he was the U.S. champ of badminton. Uh -huh. Also, junior tennis, he was very good at that. <laughs> he was a very good ping pong player. He was <laughs> I, <laughs> 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 I was <laughs> Pomona. God. You knew him at Pomona? Huh? At Pomona? Yeah, he went, he went to Pomona the same time I did. And uh, David Freeman did. He turned into a doctor. And he lives in San Diego. I haven't seen him since, I don't think. But hmm. uh, he's fun to play ping pong with because you, you couldn't beat him. But uh, <laughs> he was very nice. <laughs> You'd take it easy on him once God, you'd work your tail off and you'd get a point, you know, and you'd uh -huh. just keep getting another point, another point. And, and you'd think, well, let me get him this time, you know, and you maybe let you get ahead by six or eight points. Uh -huh. And then the old door shut. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Bobby Riggs play tennis once, uh -huh. that was sort of the same way. Yeah. He would have doubled the bet by when the guy thought he could <laughs> get some place. Yeah, yeah, easy bet. <laughs> you, you, you thought you were wonderful. But Mm. Anyway, I don't know how I got started on the Freemans, but that's all. Oh, that's my grandfather was, was friends there. In fact, uh, he did something. One, I think Dr. Freeman either had a heart attack one Sunday morning in church, and then so Dr. Bear, who sat right, his pew was sort of down there right in the front. I think he went up and sort of took over and uh, finished off the service while they took. <laughs> His, his uh, buddy to the hospital. Oh my gosh! And uh, then um, let's see what else did. How did they hooked up? You know where uh, uh, where, he, he, where she was from? Where he hooked up with? I was like, oh, with his uh, wife. What's her name? Oh, John O'Laura. I don't know. Laura. Laura. met Laura. He, he met oh, what's her? What's her? Laura Barden Bear. Oh, that Laura no, Barden with no, no. Van Dusen. Yeah, Van, Van Dusen bear. Van Dusen bear. Yeah. Well, what's... Not that... What do you got here? I don't know. You better... Sh <laughs> it says here. It, uh, it doesn't make it's sense. It's not right? I can't do it. Uh, Laura Van Dusen. That's ma'am, my grandmother. Uh-huh. But uh, now who's Nancy Barden bear? Cause that's her mother. That's her mother. But she wasn't a bear until she married this guy. That's right, it doesn't make any sense. So it doesn't really make much sense. Anthony Bear, I can understand that. He, that's maybe John's dad. Maybe this, maybe she was well, over there. There were some dads over here. There were some more, some bear, more bears here because from Hungary. Yeah. But uh, I can't see how Van Dusen's mother, I mean, Laura Van Dusen's mother couldn't have been a bear. I don't think. It doesn't seem, unless the bears have been infiltrating the family for <laughs> generations. <laughs> that's right. That would be surprised. the first I heard of it. The first I heard of it. I think I'd have heard of it before. Oh. I wouldn't, Dorothy, I wouldn't say it. I was wrong, of course. Maybe I should, t I should take a, stop and take a picture of that uh, page while we're, while we're looking at it here. I'm going to, I'll pause this. Can you do that? Yeah. Okay, well here we'll take a little photograph of this page that we're looking at. And we can uh, um, zoom in a little bit here on the, first we'll do the, uh, this side of the family here. From uh, Richard David Davis, antecedents coming up here. And we'll take a look down here at uh, at uh, well, this is some of the others. Dorothy Gale Bright's side of the family on this side. That seems to be more completely filled in. Yeah, that family, they pay attention to their ancestors. <laughs> there we go, all right. All right, now we're back with all that pictures taken. I think Dad and Mother both went to Oxdale College at the same time before the war. 
Oh, and is, is that where they met? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. I haven't. It's funny. I've never heard much about the courtship. I've heard a lot about my courtship with <laughs> with, with Dorothy. Uh huh. But uh, it just seemed to be a like a for all. And I understand that my father was fairly active in the area of ladies. Yeah. He had lots of acquaintances and lots of people that he went with and so on. And uh, I guess mother was the same way. She was a very attractive gal. I don't know, somehow or other they got together and uh, they got married. Where's uh, where's she from? She was from uh, my mother. Yeah. She was from Pastina. Yeah? Yeah, she was, uh, I think she was born. Was she born in Pastina? Uh, when when uh, Bear was here running the uh yeah, I guess he I guess she was born after nineteen ten. Well yeah, they were here then they lived down next to that uh house on uh near Orange Grove. I think it was one of those old type houses, you know mm -hmm. <laughs> famous Pasadena type houses. Uh -huh. what the they call green? Them? Green and green. Yeah. They had a green and green house. Uh -huh. And that's where they they lived. I remember uh, when I was looking, st doing study of the of the history of the of the family. One of the first places that I was told to check was the uh, the census. Everybody had to have a census every oh, ten, right, ten right, years, right, you know. Right. And so wherever anybody was when the census was going on was the ticket, and that's where they were living at the time of the census. And there was my mother, and her brother George, and her brother Franny, and. Uh, the, and her mother and her father and some gal that was working for him lived there at the same time and this all shows up on the, uh, on the census. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. I forget I don't know where that stuff is. But you probably have a book full of genealogy stuff. Yeah. Maybe I think I do because I started to be a pretty good genealogy guy for a while. Yeah. But um, I guess that's, that's good stuff. But at any rate, uh, I don't remember them living anywhere else between down at, 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 down at the, uh, in the on the Arroyo there where we first went when I was mm -hmm. born, and I guess they lived in this this Westmoreland house uh, before that because that was a 1910 census, uh -huh. and I wasn't born until 1919, mm -hmm. so they, they they must have lived there for a while, maybe 10 years. Ago. And he could, he could have, possibly, he could have been doing the Occidental bit from there. Sure. So. Well, do you know what, you don't know what years he was at President of Oxy? No, no, it's, it's, in the, it's, it's on the sheet here. Yeah. If we were going to do this right, I'd have all this material under my nose so I could tell you all this good stuff. Well, we can, we can stop and get it all. But, uh, huh? We can stop and, and, and get it all here. Have you got, you got stuff that you can, you want to put down in front of you? If we're going to try and get any f any figures that are straight, you know, I, mean, I, I know I can't remember all that stuff. So yeah. And I'm not so sure that I've got all of it written down anywhere. But there's some, uh -huh. there, there are some things that are written down. Well, okay, then why don't we, we can we'll so, take a look at them. Okay. Right. Give it this. It's the old Eve Hall here. Well, we're going to we're it's taking a here. detour here. We're going to try and uh, get uh, some pictures of the Sindad's closet upstairs. Gonna look at the the pictures here now. I'm gonna have to climb up on these chairs to do so. I'm gonna take me on a tour here now. Oh, we're starting we over there and working our way around. Okay, okay, let me get up on. Let me. <coughs> All right, let me get up here. All right. All right, that's old R.D. on the horse in the parade. Uh, yeah. Get a kind of a reflection on that. See it's that? not so hotsy totsy. Let me. Oh, well, this light over here is bad. Uh, uh, Shoot from down here, you don't see it. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'll stay down. It. That's done very good. Now I see. There we go. Better, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, and then? And then you go over to, uh, that's Leela. I mean, is that what her name is? Leela? Grandmother. Grandmother, huh? She, that's very good. I just got that on the back. It tells, too. Stop. Turn okay. that thing off. Go ahead. What this are we looking at here? So you're looking at grandfather and grandmother Stevenson and family in Vacaville. And July of 1888, seated left to right, grandmother Maria Emmeline Gardner Stevenson. 
Ann Buck holding Frank Buck. Frank Buck. Jenny Stitt huh. standing left to right. Mary Lou Heilbrunn. Andy Stevenson Jr. Dr. James W. Stitt. Leela Stevenson. That's uh -huh. my grandmother. Mabel and Dr. Sam M. Terrell. And grandfather Andrew M. Stevenson. Now this is a relative of yours, Andrew? M. Stevenson. I, I don't know. Most people go look at our sheet again. Sounds like it. Yeah. All right, good. I'm going to turn this off now. This is a better picture of Lila Stevenson. Yeah. She's the one that they did the window for in the church. Oh, that's right. We'll have to go get that uh, picture of that window. And there's uh, Dr. John Willis Bear himself. That's, that's the one I thought you looked like, Henry. Huh? When I see how you waggle your ears and things, he does that too. Huh. He had a lot of hair too. So that's there you go. Know. That's maybe where we got that. And then uh, who's next? Well, I don't know where you're going next. Wherever you like, you, down. you tell me. Well, come down. I start down here. Then then you get Dad when he was a this kid, right there. Okay. Let me get over. And uh, reflections here. I'm gonna get these off here without the reflections. See if I can. There we go. Better. It's me reflected in him. That's kind of interesting. Hello. Okay. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Okay, that's Dad. He was. Okay. Buck. There's Mother. Uh, I'm gonna make a better system for this. Mildred, Bear, Davis. Okay, that's this, Dad. Well, that's our porch on the house at uh, San Pasquale. And there's Dad holding Laura Bell and Donald and I sitting on the steps with Mother supervising the whole operation. <laughs> this was, uh, that was recently before they had a divorce. They probably had a divorce reasonably close to that time. Hmm. Maybe in a year. Hmm. Hmm. There's Laura Bell and... There's Mother again. It's a good picture. And That's Dad during World War One with his friend uh, Don something or other. Don Cantley. Don <laughs> Cantley. <laughs> and, uh, there wasn't any Cantley there, but that's what it was. Uh, we got a, another picture of. That's the big real estate fellow. Uh, that's the, the tycoon up there. Yeah. R.D. R.D. The second. Yep, junior. R.D. Junior, right. right. Of course, you're dead. And then oh, picture yeah, yeah. this is the this is the, the offspring. Yeah, offspring. This uh, me actors. and Dave yeah. and uh, me as Tom Sawyer. And uh, now whose baptism is this? Well, it must be uh, Dodie because it's Uncle John uh -huh. and uh, Jenna and her husband. Jenna. Yeah, Jenna. Rupp was a, but that's not her name there. She married that guy with the glasses who's a dentist. Uh, who has since died a long uh, time ago. Huh. But that's Dodie's godparents? That's Dodie's godparents, yeah. Okay. And uh, speaking that's of Dodie, Dodie there's she the with her big fish, her friend. Out of sea world. And uh, there's David at the post office getting his thing with Mary Lyon Bob and the head of the pastor of the post good. office. Yeah. Here we go. There's David smiling happily. Smiling David. And uh, there's uh, smiling me. The show at the Guthrie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's an, here's another representation of me. Yeah, we got a lot of pictures here. That's pretty here. good. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's the whole group that fi picture a lot of people have. And at the Gino's uh, house. There's you and mom and uh, the. That's the siblings. Six kids. Yep. Good. Same time. Good. That's it. As we're here, we'll get the, uh, the beauty. Oh, did get married. That's a lot. All right, good. Let's see whatever you like. Oh, I see. I gather that these two pictures are of me early on. Uh -huh.
This is Dick Davis, the captain of the winning team, uh, B Company, at the academy. This shows what a college education can do for somebody. <laughs> the one on the left is getting there and the other one's afterwards. Here we are, a senior in college, graduating from Pomona, getting ready to go out into the big world, period. Brother Don and I are trying to look like we know something and get somewhere, and we are. Amen. <laughs> Here we are, fighting the war over in Kailua, Kauai, and uh, oh, too bad you gotta get early look at a soldier with old hat on and guarding Douglas Aircraft Plant. All right, now. 80 years, and here we are, still <laughs> talking and not saying much. So long. We're going to talk about uh, my mother, Mildred Bear Davis. Very, very nice mother. <laughs> she uh, had a kind of a tough time because she was tied up originally with a really nice guy for a husband. And in the process, they managed to have three kids, me, Donald, and Laura Bell. Uh -huh. And uh, we lived, as I remember, I mean, during my bailiwick, uh, at first on, on California Terrace, and uh, then we lived on Madison Avenue in a, in a rental while they were building the house on San Pasquale. So you moved in the house, you, and San Pasquale was one that uh, Poppy built yeah, for you? Yeah, Dad built the house uh, on San Pasquale uh, while we were staying in, in Madison. And uh, I guess uh, we were going to school in McKinley at the time. So, so it's like junior high school? Junior high school, yeah. I'd ride the bike in from uh, San Pasquale into McKinley and back at, in the afternoon. So it was a pretty good bike ride. But uh, prior to that, we went to elementary school there in Hamilton, which is up the street from San Pasquale on, uh, on Del Mar and uh, on Del Mar and something. Yeah, still there. Right, still there, yeah. And uh, at any rate, Donald came along about the same time, uh, two and a half years later, and he uh, followed the same pattern, more or less, except that... Uh, he didn't go to uh, to uh, Hamilton. He uh, decided that it seemed like it'd be better if we could send him off to school someplace, and so they sent him to the Midland Ranch School, which was up in Santa Barbara. Oh, really? For junior high school? No, for for elementary school. Oh, for elementary school. Right, and uh, I think he went there a couple of years. And uh, so you were going to junior high school, school, and he went up to. And he left it. Was it Laura Bell right, right. around at this Laura time? Laura Bell was, well, she was six years younger than we were, so I guess she was just around a little bit. Huh. She probably, she might remember. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I can't remember whether Donald went there two years or, or one year, but about the time uh, we bailed, he bailed out of there, I made a deal to go to high school after junior high at McKinley down to the San Diego Army and Navy Academy where I went uh, for four years and at the time I was helped pay the way through there by working in the kitchen and waiting table and delivering the home meals. Colonel Davis who was the guy that owned the place and his mother lived off the campus a little bit in a kind of house and every meal would be taken to them from the kitchen. And that, that was a job I had and I hmm. enjoyed. So there were a couple other families that we did the same thing for. But I remember that academy as a kind of a neat place to go because I kind of liked being in the, in the, uh, in the military school I guess. And I liked the way they did things and uh, learned how to type there and uh, Learned how to do a lot of things that I uh, hadn't done before. I, uh, the, the guy that taught Jim there was, I uh, forget his name, but he was a neat guy. And uh, he decided he was going to straighten out my physical condition because I really wasn't the greatest uh, specimen of, of uh, manhood at that time. 
So we, through a series of exercises and rope climbing and acrobatics and stuff, uh, he managed to grow my chest and uh, my muscles and uh, really kind of whistled me into the system. Hmm. And uh, so I remember that pretty good. And uh, then as we went on, of course, the idea was to see if you get yourself promoted. And so I managed to work myself up to when I was a senior, I was the uh, captain of B Company. But there were two companies and, and the band there. And uh, B Company was the one that uh, managed to win that year the uh, competitive drills. And uh, so that was good. And it was it was great being in that particular company because it was nice to to march in parades. And we had a band and we used to go down to San Diego and march down the main street on mm. holidays, and it was kind of fun doing that. Particularly if we did it well, and we did it up at Balboa Park. We used to go there and parade around once in a while. And so. Anyway, we went there for four years, and then the trick was to go to college. So. Well, before that, how how did you happen to how did you how did it feel to go to? I mean, must be, I, it's hard for me to picture going away to a boarding school for four for years. for four years, even if it's you know it's only a couple of hours down the road. Yeah. So, you know, how did you, did you feel like? Yeah, I mean, well, I learned how to ride the Greyhound bus between Pasadena and uh, San Diego because uh -huh. I used to. When I came home, I'd come home on the bus, and when I go back, I'd go back on the bus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I forget what it cost, but it wasn't much compared to what it would cost now, probably. Mm -hmm. and I, I, it wasn't all that tough because mother at the time was divorced from dad. And you know, let's uh, go back to that. I want to figure out how that happened. I don't know how that happened. They just what, well, I bet it, but from your point of view, what happened? Well, from my point of view, they just uh, couldn't make it work, and uh, he, dad. I don't know what he did or whatever, but it, whatever it was, mother couldn't handle it. Was she hollering about? She said uh, he was a drunk and he, and he went off with another woman. Well, that's probably what he did. I, I never saw him doing it. I know I, know I saw him drinking, so he did he did do that, and he was uh -huh. an alcoholic, I guess. Although he never acted like other alcoholics that I've seen since, uh -huh. and. Uh, he managed to get it, that part of it under control, and uh, but in the meantime, mother wasn't going to take any more of that or the other woman type stuff. So, so and, and it was just before you went to high school that they broke up. Yeah. So it was when you were like at McKinley. I don't know. I don't remember when it was. I know it was. We, she was single and running her own business, which was a business of selling knitted suits and. Other things that she made, but she started yeah, doing that after started doing that after they got divorced. After they got divorced, so she right. was she had the Mips's Mip, hats, Mip, Mip, Mip hats, Mip, Mip caps, Mip you know, caps, yeah, Mip caps. Yeah, uh, at that time, and uh, she used to travel around Southern California with a stock of this stuff and have gatherings of ladies that uh, were interested in that sort of thing at oh. somebody's home that she knew, and they'd come. Sort of like there. Tupperware. Same idea. Tupperware. Same idea. Early Tupperware. So she, but she didn't start doing that when uh, she was married. She started doing that after she was married. Oh yeah. Actually, I mean, after the divorce. I think it was after the divorce she started doing it. Yeah. To sort of make some money on the side that she could use, because I, I don't know. I think she probably got uh, Dad's share of the Davis property money that that each of the kids got from their grandfather when he died. Uh -huh. So it wasn't that she was destitute, but I think she needed extra money to make the house work and keep that house. It was a fairly expensive house. And which house is this? The one on San Pasquale. Do you remember whereabouts on San Pasquale? 2040 was the number. It's right by San Marino Avenue, one door over from uh -huh. there on the south side of the street. So she stayed there? Yeah, and she stayed there with all of us. Where did uh, your dad go? Well, dad went uh, to the Davis properties and got an apartment there. Huh. And uh, lived there, and uh, married uh, Betty, and they lived there, and, and they had a daughter. I forget her name, but nice gal. She stayed there with them at the time. And uh, well, I didn't know he'd had a he'd had another uh, daughter. He did. Betty. Davis. He didn't have Betty. It wasn't his daughter. She was 
the daughter of. Oh, he she Betty came along with daughter. with yeah, Betty. She came along with Betty, right? I can't remember uh, what developed and why that didn't hang together forever, but it didn't. And because uh, somewhere along the line, uh, it must have taken when the mother was killed when we were I guess I was a sophomore or junior down at the Naval Academy, down at the San Diego Army Navy Academy. Right. And then when, uh, when I graduated uh, and went to Pomona, Dad was still around and had, uh, I don't know whether he was what he was doing or where he was living at the time. I think it was, I think he lived at the Davis property uh -huh. all the time. So you're, you're but he wasn't but he wasn't married to Betty. He, he got this new lady that he after Betty had got. And I, I, we shouldn't I shouldn't be talking about it because I don't remember all the details of how it came to pass and uh -huh. what he did and so on. And so forth. Well, that's all right. The but but <coughs> you were so so you lived it for a couple of years, like in junior high school, maybe after. Your dad left, so yeah. did you, you spend some time with just your mom at the San Pasquale house? Before yeah. then, you went down to. Then we went to the to the, the academy. Military academy, right? So, uh, and then when did after we, that, we went to Pomona. Right, but she, she, your mother died coming down to she visit you. She died when I guess it was my junior year, or maybe. But the the story of that yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. My brother Donald was there at the time too, and uh, she came over that evening. To visit us, she'd had her little showing over at uh, Jones's house there in, in La Jolla, uh -huh. and then she came over to the academy to see the kids, and uh, we chatted with her and talked to her, and she parked the car, and that's where we did the talking because there wasn't much else. They had taken them down to the administration building, but we didn't do that. We just sort of sat around in the car and talked and showed her our room. Then uh, do you share a room with Don? No, I had a roommate. Oh, uh, Pancho Thompson. <laughs> his name. Huh. He's a guy from Mexico City. Huh. Nice guy. Got some pictures of him. And I don't know who Donald's roommate was at that time. At any rate, uh, after on her way, uh, she went back to La Jolla when about nine o'clock, I guess, and then. Apparently, as she was going through Pacific Beach, this guy ran into her and killed her. And uh, so we we didn't know it, of course, at the time. And but we knew there was something wrong because there was suddenly a deathly hush all over the place there at the academy. And, uh, and then finally, somebody came and, and told us that. Uh, so you so you already knew that something was wrong. We knew there was something. Something was wrong someplace, huh. and and uh, for some reason or other, I felt like there was mother had a problem because I don't know. You just have feelings about things. Uh -huh. Of course, it could have been wrong too. Yeah. So that was that, and I, was, huh. I don't remember what else happened except that I died. And well, what do you remember about your mom? I mean, what, what, what oh, she was a nice lady. She wrote wonderful letters, which I have. Still, many of them around. Oh yeah, yeah, I think. Doris? Yeah. Don't we have mother's letters somewhere? We do. She said we do. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can tell by reading them what kind of a gal she was. She, uh -huh. was, she really <laughs> wanted everything to be right for us guys, uh -huh. my brother and I, and uh, she did everything she could to see to it that, that it was that way. And she had a lot of friends, and uh, she was. Kind of liked people. She was. She helped her you know, uncle Franny. Her her brother mm -hmm. had a wife called Annie Jill, and uh, she was instrumental in starting this town club that Dorothy's in now. Uh, Annie Jill and uh, Annie Jill was, and, and some of her friends and Dorothy. I uh, not Dorothy, but uh, Mildred Mip uh -huh. were at, were early members of the uh, of the town club. Right. And. Uh, they did that because they they wanted to have some place to go out instead of the California Club or the Jonathan Club, which they wouldn't let them in in those, right. days, in those days. So they had their own club, and it's the same house that it is now, except that they've modified it some. Uh -huh. <coughs> and but it's it's run about the same way, I guess. 
yeah. still have good food and uh, yeah, good service. Good yeah. yeah, well done. Well, so after after your mother died, yeah. Um, uh, what was your what uh, what did you do in terms of coming home? Where did you come well, home? We to? didn't have a home. We went. Uh, mother before she died married Donald Conance, and he was a Canadian guy. Awful nice fellow. And, uh, so how long has she been married to him? He died on their honeymoon. You know. That's right. So she just. So he just married him, and uh, she was sort of mourning that deal when she came down to see us. So how long? So, uh, so how long after is that he died? Did she die? She, like. Uh, well, it must it could have been more than a year. Huh. I don't think. Sheesh. So it was like a couple of years after she got divorced, she got married. Right. And then less than a year later. Uh, yeah. Something like that. And she was, because this was going to be a neat deal, because they, they, she, she really liked this guy and he liked her. And, they uh -huh. were and you got along well with this oh, guy? Oh, yeah, yeah, nice guy. But anyway, so after she died, uh, then when we, we wanted to, when, when it was vacation, we'd go to the Downings, which Evelyn Downing was Donald Conance's sister. Uh huh. And uh, she and mother were good friends. And so she felt sorry for Donald and I because we didn't have any home to go to. Uh -huh. So wherever they were, they were they moved all over Pasadena, San Marino. Finally moved down to Laguna. Bought this house down there on Crescent Bay, but didn't seem to make any difference where they were. We always went there. So that's where you, that's what you consider home for your last couple of years of yeah, high school. Right, that was it. And. Uh, Evie uh, Downing, what was your husband's name? Uh, it was Addis, A-D-D-I-S, Addis Downing. And he was Conance's... Uh, he married, well, Conance was his wife. Uh, right. What's right. her name? Uh, Evelyn, Evie. Evelyn yeah. Conance was yeah. his wife. Evelyn Conance, yeah. And they had two daughters, Evelyn and Barbara. And uh, I think that's all the kids they had were those two. So that was kind of handy because they were about the same age that Nala and I were, mm -hmm. and uh, so we had good company for the for the daughters, and, and then we got along well, and it was a nice, it was a real slick deal. It was a good family kind of an arrangement, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's funny, I don't really s see how we did all that, uh, how we <laughs> how we kind of melded in with that family, but, uh -huh. uh, but I guess we did. Anyway, we got we got through the deal. Mm -hmm. And good style. So did that kind of relationship carry on all the way through yeah, high, uh, college? It did, yeah. I can remember when I was in college going down to Laguna and taking part of the fraternity or other guys and going down there and having time and taking gals down there and, and uh, introducing them to Aunt Abby and see what she thought of them. And, uh, she always thought Dorothy was the best one of the bunch. Uh huh. And, uh, and she was. But. Uh, it was neat to have a place like that and have a person like that that you could just feel comfortable being around and, uh -huh. and, and knowing that you really didn't belong there, sort of, although she made it feel like you did. Uh -huh. What about, did you ever go see your dad or was there any kind of yeah, uh, was your connection like with your dad during all this For a while time? dad uh, tried to uh, keep us from from being with mother. I don't know just how it was a kind of a tough deal. He, I don't remember exactly what the problem was or how we did it or what, but I know there were some hard times early on before uh -huh. we got this other thing set up about who's going to look after us. Uh -huh. He wanted to do it, I think, and, uh, and Uncle Franny was going to do it as the guardian. Uh -huh. And uh, so that's kind of how it worked out. Uncle Franny was set up as our guardian. Huh, in the, the divorce? Uh, yeah after the divorce. Huh. And uh, so I think that was what the argument was all about and Dad didn't like it and so we kind of were in the middle on the deal. So my brother and I and, uh -huh. uh, and poor Laura Bell was kind of younger by six years than yeah. we were. So it was tougher on her because she really didn't have a place to go. And so finally Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Did Jill and Uncle Franny sort of halfway adopted her, and she stayed with them uh, when she was home or with 
her grandmother, Memo, down at the Huntington. Huh. So she never really had one. She didn't have much of a deal after her mother died. No, it was tougher on her than anybody. Uh -huh. But, uh... So why, you didn't spend much time with Laura Bell then? No, we didn't. We'd, we'd see him, we'd go down to Uncle Franny's, and we'd, I don't know, we'd... Where's Uncle Franny living at this point? They were living in uh, South Pasadena, uh -huh. on Ashburn Drive. Had a nice house down there, tennis court, we used to go out and play tennis and play around. And uh, he had two daughters, Anne and uh, Polly, who were our same age. So we got like acquainted with them pretty good. But it never, it was never really like home like the Downing setup was. It was mm -hmm. but for Laura Bell, it was it was it was a good arrangement. And although I, I hear subsequently from Dorothy and others about how Laura Bell didn't really feel like she was welcome around there for some reason or other. But, but I think I always thought she was anyway. Am I kicking you? You're not yes uh, your feet are squeaking a lot. I just wondered if the sun was gonna show up here. That's all right. Yeah. To get to, get so walk and shoes. Anyway that's about uh, we sort of muddled along there, I guess. Yeah. One thing led to another. We managed to get to college and Uncle Franny got us a job every summer working someplace. We work uh, what kind of summer job? One time, one summer job was uh, doing the uh, hacking <coughs> of the bushes ahead of the surveyors. Oh, Come yeah. along, you know, surveying the property in this area where they were trying to, uh, the Blue Diamond people were trying to stake out some kind of a piece of property up there, and they hired this guy to do it. And <coughs> they did some they strong young guys to whack the. They wanted us to whack the brush, yeah. And so. <laughs> It was pretty good. The trouble with that deal is they went exactly right the way they were. The hill went down, and this line down, mm -hmm. you'd go. If the hill went up, sh up you'd go. And uh, mm -hmm. this old guy, he'd, we'd haul uh, the, the transit and the, <coughs> the thing along with it, and we were up there banging away. You didn't have to knock the whole forest down. You just had to kind of knock enough out so that <coughs> he could see through uh -huh. the line that he wanted to see. Right. And he'd tell you where the, where the whack him if you needed to whack something. Uh -huh. We didn't chop down the whole forest, <laughs> but we managed to do a lot of chopping that summer. <laughs> but at night, I don't know who fed us or how we got dinner, but we had food. We lived in a tent out there, and uh, this guy that carried the transit snored. God, the tent would lift when he'd snore <laughs> <laughs> go down. <laughs> but uh, it got so we were both tired enough to where we didn't mind that. We just slept along. So we did that one summer. Another summer, we went down to the. There was this uh, farm up in uh, Brentwood, which is up near uh, Pittsburgh, California. Where's that? Well, it's sort of near Stockton, hmm. south and west of Stockton. It's 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 land out there that was all underwater, and had been <coughs> reclaimed, and they made canals, pumped the water out. Uh -huh. and kept it in the canals and, and it was very rich soil. It was all peat. It was so rich it was like peat, peat moss. Mm -hmm. It would light it, it would burn. Hmm. And, but it was very fertile, I guess, and they used to they grow all kinds of uh, produce there. And that's what this guy did that, uh, that had it. He was really a, kind of a gentleman farmer. He was, uh, forget what he did in the way of uh, really living. But he had a, a boat, a nice yacht called the Sado Manana, I think it was, something mm. like that. And uh, Uncle Franny and uh, Auntie Jill and a lot of them would go out on the yacht to different kinds of things. And then sometimes he'd come up and park the yacht up at this, in this property where <coughs> where the farm was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Donald and I were <coughs> hired to be in the labor gang of this place. <coughs> yeah, right? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So. Before we worked on the farm, though, they, they had us picking apricots because that was the season for apricots, and there were a lot of them around there needed picking. And uh, the trouble with that deal was that Donald was colorblind, and oh, he couldn't tell that. a ripe one from a, from a <laughs> raw one. And uh, the other trouble was that we couldn't pick them fast enough to make enough money to where it made sense to do it. You know, uh -huh. You'd climb up the end and run a ladder, and then you'd be shoveling these things in and they pay I think a nickel and a bucket, a great big old uh -huh. bucket. 
and yeah, these guys that pick them fast, the regular guys, you know, uh -huh. and look over at this guy. They're all <laughs> no way to make a living. So we, 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 we kind of got out of that deal as fast as we could and got back to the business of working on the farm, which wasn't all bad because uh, mostly what we did there was to, to whack weeds off the sides of the canals. And there were the canals oh, yeah. that come down like that, and there were mm -hmm. lots of weeds that they didn't want to have around. So we just we whack the weeds and jump in the canal and swim a little, and whack the weeds and swim a little, and whack the weeds. And and it was really pretty nice, and they had a couple of places built for weed whackers, like for employees that they were they were new and they were made out of cement. And mm -hmm. So it was nice there to have that place to live. And I guess they fed us too. There must have been. Well, I think somebody's uh, the, 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 the head guy there, wife was in charge of the cooking, and uh, so she'd cook the dinners and made our lunches and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they stick around, and uh, she had a daughter. Which Donald took a fancy to, called Darling Sweetheart. I forget what her name was, really. <laughs> but, uh, Everybody called her Darling Sweetheart. Well, that's or just that's Donald. what he called her, <laughs> Darling Sweetheart. And uh, she, uh, she and he used to go to the movies once in a while. We had a, a Model A Ford that uh, Uncle Franny got somewhere. I don't know what's down here. Mm -hmm. And so we used that to get up to. To Brentwood to get to do this work, and so we had the Ford there all the time to mess around with if we wanted to. Mm -hmm. It was a nice car, really a good Model A. It was a good car. So, is this when you now? Is this when you're in, in college or in high yeah, school? Yeah, in college. Oh. Where was summertime? Where, where was Don going to college? Well, Donald, uh, he was two years behind me, and he so he was in the academy for two more years I after I was at Pomona, but then then he came up there to Pomona. I think. Did he go to Pomona? No, he didn't go to Pomona either. I guess he didn't go to college. I think he finally, instead of going to college, he got a job back in Chicago working for Marshall McLennan. Huh. Because, uh, for some, I don't I forget why he didn't go to college. He was a kind of a, had a lot of fun and didn't uh, study too much. I uh -huh. guess. But uh, he was a nice guy and he had easy, easy does it, sort of. And, uh, so uh, then he went back to work for Mark McLennan. He, he met Betty, and uh, before that, though, he was all set to marry Barbie Downing, who was one of the Downing kids. You know, we were staying with them, and so he and Barbie one of Evie and uh, Ada's Evie, uh, yeah, yeah, Evie, kids, the Barbara, yeah, and Evie's daughter Barbara. Right. And uh, but that was about the time they were getting pretty thick. He got he went back. I think. They, they probably engineered it to get him out of there <laughs> and get him back to uh, some gainful employment uh -huh. in, in Chicago. And luckily, this girl Betty that he married uh, was working in the office that he went to work in. Oh, in Chicago? Yeah, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, she knew exactly how to handle Donald and did and has for his entire life. <laughs> that was the end of all this smoozling around that he was doing, huh. I guess. Uh, he, 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 he did do a little drinking, of course, and became a, an alcoholic in the process. And uh, so when uh, the this job, he ended up with being a vice president of Marston McLennan in charge of the department for the kind of insurance that he more or less invented. And he sold it all over the country. Hmm. And uh, he ran that department, and, uh, and he had a nice big office in their in their place out here in the west. And uh, but the trouble with it was, it had a uh, the end of the hall, of this executive hall, was this bar. And uh, so I'd go over there once in a while and I had to have lunch with him. And he had a special place at this uh, restaurant up the street from the was over in sort of in Hollywood. This place. Mm -hmm. The office, right? It's kind of near that uh, hotel that's still there, but not being used. Uh, the uh, ambassador. The ambassador, yeah. And this place that uh, we go to lunch is down near the ambassador, but a couple of doors this way. It's still there. It's a neat place to eat. Mm, this uh, not not the Brown Derby. They uh, said not there. Anymore. Not there. It's it's a couple a couple blocks down uh. south of that. I, I should be able to remember the name That's of the right. place, but anyway, uh, Donald had a special table there, and they all knew him. And 
But anyway, you go in here and we'd have a couple of drinks at this place at the office mm -hmm. and then down to the place there and another couple of drinks. And tough in the middle of the day. Tough, 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 tough. So anyway, that didn't, he somehow really couldn't handle all that. They had to drive from there down to to Newport Beach where he lived, you see. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you can't do it. it just That's a long haul. Doesn't work. So uh, I guess, I don't know what happened or how it worked, but he finally retired or they canned him or something. Or retired him, I guess. Mm -hmm. must have done. So that's that. Anyway, so that's off to college. Off did to you college. at Pomona College? I did, so I did, so I did. Anyway, would you like to take a break here? We've been talking for quite some time here. Let me, I should give you a oh, break yeah, before I... Right.